Good afternoon. Welcome to Reflections. I'm your host, Patrick Tomlinson. And today I have with me a good friend and um, colleague, Peter Webley, who uh, is an entrepreneur and the publisher of Caribbean Today. Peter is um, uh, located or situated in Miami, Florida, where he is currently, and I'm actually in the facilities at uh, the Yonkers Library. I have to extend my thanks to the um, staff of Yonkers for making available this facility. Welcome, Peter, and thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Patrick, for having me. Um, Pete, I've known you a long time, and um, you have done, I think, remarkable things. And I um, invited you to come on and appear on my program to just share with us a little bit about your life, um, your background, and what prompted you to go into history. But um, we'll do it in, as I said, two parts. So the first um, part I'd like us to concentrate on you know, how you grew up and where you grew up. So first I'd like to ask you, Pete, where did you, where were you born? And uh, where did you grow up? Well, I was actually born in Mandeville in Jamaica. Oh, beautiful Mandeville. Beautiful, cool Mandeville. Right. I left and came to Kingston when I was one years old. Okay. And, um, I spent the next uh, 16, 17 years in Kingston and um, before migrating to Miami, Florida, where I currently live. Okay, okay. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about your parents. I know um, your parents have had a tremendous um, influence on your life. They've shaped mm -hmm. your life, and they are pretty much, you know, to a large extent, what you are. Tell us about your your dad and your mom. So, um, my dad was. Um, a financial manager for the Sugar Industrial Authority in Jamaica. Okay. And they had started off with Kim Farmers Association mm -hmm. and then left from there and went to the Sugar Industrial Authority um, where he stayed until he uh, retired. Retired. Uh, my mother was- His name was Rupert, right? Yes, Rupert. Rupert Webley. Yeah, Rupert. And you have a very um, um, influential uncle too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Reverend- um, Reverend Stanford Webley. Okay. Uh, you, you might um, remember him doing the midday prayer every day. In Jamaica uh, on the radio, yes. And St. Stephen's Calling mm -hmm. uh, every five o'clock. Um, it's the longest running radio program in Jamaica at the time. Okay. And um, he passed two years ago. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And, but my mother was a teacher and she mm -hmm. the head of the, the, she was the general secretary, sorry, of the Home Economic Society of Jamaica. Okay. And she um, taught at Meadowbrook High School uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Kingston. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, she migrated and came up here uh, with me when um, we left Jamaica in 1978, 79. Okay, okay, what was her name? Mavis Webley. Okay, this is Mavis Webley. So I know you went to the famous um, Calabar High School. Yes. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, New Year's Calabar, at Calabar. Yes, Calabar High School is Jamaica's foremost um, track and field school. Well, I know others <laughs> would disagree with that. <laughs> well, uh, we're the winningest um, track and field school in Jamaica. Um, oh. Some of the most prominent names coming out of that school, like mm -hmm. uh, Herb McKinley, who was actually my coach mm -hmm. while I, um, attending Calabar and running track for them. Okay. What what did you do? What was your specialty at the time? I ran 8, 15, and 3,000 meters. I was a oh. distance runner. Oh, you're a distance runner. A, a matter of fact, I actually credit that with um, how I run my business. Okay. In, um, the, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to have the long view mm -hmm. and be prepared for long, tough days and nights. Okay. And most of the time, it's just you and God in this race together. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, a lot of time for introspection, mm -hmm. reflection, mm -hmm. and, um, and you push yourself to the limit 
as you must when your coach tells you to run 30 miles one way and come back. Okay. You know? Who are some of the um, prominent boys that you um, you remember while you're in school, uh, you know, on your track team? Well, you know, um, people like uh, my running mate, Gilbert Dunkley. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gilbert was known as Bulb. Um, then we had Michael Campbell, who used to throw discus, and um, Will um, Williams, and a couple other good guys. Mm-hmm. It was an all-round star team. Okay. Uh, the okay. famous Willow, um, mm-hmm. and Lee, mm-hmm. Richard Lee, you know, uh, quite a few. Okay, okay. And your siblings, you want to tell us a little bit about your siblings? So I have um, two brothers, Junior, who is a oh. special needs child, mm-hmm. and uh, my brother Michael, who has an interior decorating business uh, for the last 36, 37 years here in Miami, very mm-hmm. prominent. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister, who is um, deceased, she died five years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, she was 50. On the lenses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, died from lung cancer, and she never mm-hmm. smoked a cigarette in her life. Mm-hmm. And um, as the oncologist told us, more and more women are dying from lung cancer who've never ever smoked. You mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. They're trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And your brother, Errol. And my brother, Errol. And right. he um, died two years ago in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lived in Long Island. Mm-hmm. And, um, he passed from the flu. Mm-hmm. 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 So you've had to develop a inward strength um, to, to push on and to go on. Yes. Um, you know, I worked with my dad for nine years before his death. Mm -hmm. And um, five months after I came to Miami, uh, my mother had a massive heart attack. Okay. Um, It was Mm fast-paced, constantly on the go. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if she was used to it. Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. suffered a massive heart attack. Okay. um, I was fortunate enough that um, we had her for another nine years. Mm -hmm. for me to finish all my schooling and and start my work career. Mm -hmm. And actually, yeah, and actually bought my first house before she died. She died in 1988. Okay, okay, okay. And, um, you know, and my dad died in 1998. Mm -hmm. So I got another 10 years with him. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my sister died um, in 2000 and... Um, 13, I believe. Okay. Okay. So um, what was growing up like? Where did you live when you were growing up and, and going to school? I lived in Havendale. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, Havendale is the largest middle-class neighborhood in the Caribbean. Okay. Is it? It is. It okay. Is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people don't realize that all the English-speaking Caribbean population and landmass can fit in Jamaica and you have one third left over. Yes, I know you're a, a traveled person, huh? so we'll hear a little bit about that. Right. So you lived in Hibne, what was growing up like for you? It, it was fantastic because um, I I had a, a storybook um, childhood. Um, I, I was very, very privileged um, and my father, reminded me of that all the time. He actually okay. used to call me the Prince of Havendale. Yes. I, I believe it. I, okay. I believe it. Um, yeah, there's nothing that I couldn't do, um, I, you know, and there's nothing that I couldn't get or achieve if I put my mind to it, he would tell me. Right, right. What were some of your hobbies growing up? I used to collect comics. As a matter of fact, um, up until the time that I, I don't like talking about it, but it's true. Um, I had 35,000 comics. Um, wow. Yeah. It's and, quite a collection. Yeah. And when we decided to migrate, uh, my father forced me to sell the collection because mm-hmm. he said, you know, where would we keep it? Mm-hmm. Well, you and I would be talking in some very different places if I had kept my comic collection. Right, right, right. You know, um, 
uh, I had some of the very first um, comics made, Richie Riches, uh, all with Spider-Man, you name mm-hmm. it, you know, mm-hmm. and to have all of that, um, and I had to get rid of it. Okay. You know, um, I have some regrets, but no regrets. Mm-hmm. Um, I love track and field, uh, and I was uh, what I considered an all-arounder. Um, mm-hmm. There is nothing that I wouldn't and couldn't do. You right. know? Um, I used to love going to my grandfather's farm and riding. Where was this? This is my, well, my mother's father mm-hmm. uh, is from Ocherius. Okay. And um, he had three farms in Ocherius um, and their adjoining areas, them mm-hmm. and Upton and Dunthrow. Mm-hmm. And we used to love going there and visiting with him and riding his horses and having a good old time in okay. years, you know. And and also my father's parents, he's from four parts in Clarendon. Mm-hmm. And, um, my grandmother had her own uh, haberdashery um, store in in um, in four parts for a, a number of years. Okay, and so there was uh, always the business element in your upbringing absolutely yeah. absolutely you know mm-hmm. and the, the wonderful thing about my grandparents and my parents is that they constantly taught us and shielded us you know what to do what to look for uh, even from a young age mm-hmm. you know and i found myself doing these things with my children because um I'm not perfect, far from it. You know, I make mistakes and every time I fall, I pick up the phone and said, hey, I tripped. Mm. And, you know, you guys need to look out for this in your lives and note this for your future. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we keep sharing and uplifting each other. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So um, were there any other individuals growing up in school, any teachers, principals that um, you remember and had an impact on you or? I enjoyed all my my teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think my teachers enjoyed me as much as I enjoyed no. my teachers. <laughs> I, I was your typical um, Dennis the Menace. In, okay. Uh, you know, if there was trouble to get into, I would get into it. Fortunately, I didn't get penalized too much for it because mm-hmm. I was a liked child. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Who was the principal while you were in school at the time? Mr. Edgar. Oh, okay. Mr. Edgar was the principal at the time. Okay. And um, yeah, we met up two years ago. He came down from Atlanta. We honored him um, in Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a chance to catch up and chat and okay. take a couple of photographs together. Uh, Mr. Robinson was our history teacher, and he he was um, excellent also, you know. Mm-hmm. What were some of your favorite subjects in high school? I loved history, and I loved um, commerce, mm-hmm. and um, and actually Bible knowledge, you know. Okay. And literature mm-hmm. uh, was one of four boys to pass literature at <laughs> Calabar. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's English literature. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. So you're a man of, of of words. Yes. In a manner of speaking. One could, it, one could put it that way, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um you uh what you left um after high school Mm-hmm. You migrated to Miami, Florida. Right. And um, immediately after leaving um, Upper Six, because uh-huh. I didn't complete Upper Six, uh-huh. um, I went directly into Miami Dade Junior College. And um, I did Miami Dade Junior College in just about a year and a, a semester. Uh-huh. Uh, um, and not only got credit for my my schooling in Jamaica, uh, extra credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I did up to 21 credits in a single semester. Okay. Which I don't recommend to anybody. I wouldn't do it again. Right. Uh, but because at the time my mother was ill, I felt a sense of urgency 
to finish my schooling and get out there as quickly as I could right. to help the family to anchor itself in this mm -hmm. new promised land. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was the um, the experience of of migration um, to you or on your on you and your family? I mean, was it a typical you, you know, immigrant experience? I. You know, I don't know what the typical immigrant immigrant experience mm -hmm. is. I enjoyed my migration here. Mm -hmm. I, by nature, a very adventurous person, mm -hmm. and um, I feel comfortable with anybody that I'm around. Okay. And I try to make anybody who is around me um, feel comfortable. Oh, okay. okay. I've been in the midst of the most raging racist that you can come across. And uh, by the time all was said and done, um, they were inviting me back for dinner. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, I know you're that sort of person, you're that character, and um, you're, you're in the media business, so um, it's, it's, it's all a part of you. Yeah. Um, so yeah. having... Um, by the way, what did you major in at, at Miami Dade? What was your major? What I, did have, you... I have um, my associates in, in business. Okay. And, and then um, I wanted to do psychology. Mm. And at the time in 1980, um, 79, 80, uh, my advisors uh, told me that the field was full. Mm -hmm. It was jam. Every second person was a uh, going into psychology right. and um, what he didn't tell me then, as is true today, is that there is a serious shortage of black psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my uncle who lived in Mississauga, Toronto, um, Canada rather, um, he was a psychiatrist and he was one of my favorite uncles. Okay. Uncle Joe Johnson, Dr. Mm -hmm. Joe Johnson. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to follow in his footsteps. Okay. But when they told me that, you know, I I couldn't even make a living from it because it was so packed and so jammed. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, if I got in, um, I, you know, I changed course and went off to, with a scholarship to USF in Tampa and finished my schooling with a double degree, marketing and management, and I have a minor in finance. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, what prompted you, you? You had just a, a natural interest in business and management. You knew that uh, that was where you were going to end up? Um, well, once I set my mind to it, mm -hmm. I... It became as if I was a French exorcist missile. I just locked in on the target and I went okay. directly to it. Okay. So you're very clear in your mind what you wanted to do, your, your, yes. your objectives. And yes. Set objectives as a young man mm -hmm. and um, you just followed them right through. Right through. And, um, you know, when I graduated from um, university, you were mm -hmm. sir. I came back to Miami and I went. Where, where was you that, um, where was that, where was USF located? In Tampa, Florida. Okay, so that is on the other side of where you live, right? On the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I'm on the East Coast, Tampa is on the West Coast. Okay. And back then, um, you know, very few black students attended uh, USF. Mm -hmm. I would, a student population of 21,000 days. We'd be lucky if we had 2,000 black students. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, That's like 10%. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and, but that gave me an opportunity to learn about all these other people that came from all over the United States um, studying at USF and coming from Jamaica. Well, it was a, a little cool back mm -hmm. in the 80s, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, it, uh, a lot of doors were open to me um, just by that fact that I came from Jamaica. And, um, you know, 
it was at a very special time. I keep telling my children I was born at the perfect time in history in 1961. The entire universe was now changing at warp speed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, you majored in marketing and finance at, at USF. Marketing and management. With marketing and management. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I came back to Miami, I went to work at um, the Ben Eckerts, um, uh, using my management degree. Mm -hmm. and, um, Eckerts is now CVS. Okay. They were taught by CVS. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, I came home <clears throat> on the promise that um, my father said, if you come home, finish school quickly and come home, I'll give you a European experience. Mm -hmm. And of course, you and I hearing that and what I was used to, um, I was thinking of spending at least three months in London, two months in France, you know, and maybe running down to Spain for, you know, a month or two. And, you know, I hurried up and finished my schooling and came down and my father gave me a wonderful European experience. He handed me the keys to his Volvo and say, go and find a job. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I got a job at Eckerts, as I told you. And um, what were you doing at Eckerts? I was a management trainee. Okay. And, um, and I was going to work on my fourth or fifth day. Uh, and uh, Hurricane David passed off the coast of Florida. Mm -hmm. And we had some bad inclement weather um, blowing through. And I had an accident. We were a 16 year old young lady in a Porsche touring to three cars, um, uh, totaling um, just about everything, total her Porsche. Uh, I was car number two. And, um, and I ended up because back then who wore seatbelts, you know? Um, I ended up upside down in the passenger seat. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I had just closed the sunroof, had I not. I'd probably have broken my neck because I went up, hit the sunroof, and ended up in the passenger seat. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Feet up, you mm -hmm. know. And I, I was out of a commission for the next nine months. Wow. And, and um, back then, Eckerts would not rehire anybody if um, they had a back injury. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, as a result, uh, my my career there ended. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything. Uh, do you I, feel disappointed about that at the time? I did. Mm -hmm. I, I I was really upset because um, you know this is what I wanted, or this is what I thought I wanted, and um, and uh, you know after I started coming around and 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 getting back on my feet, uh, a, a girlfriend of mine, um, Carolyn said to me that uh, there was a newspaper that um, was hiring downtown on Brickle Avenue, which is our Wall Street, so down here in Miami. Mm -hmm. And um, they were paying $5 an hour. And back then, $5 an hour was great money. Mm -hmm. But I shrugged it off and I said, yeah, right. You know, um, yeah, $5 an hour, doing what? delivering newspapers. I said, let me just, let, let me just wrap my head around this. Um, so my parents sent me to university for this period of time to come back to go deliver newspapers. Mm -hmm. And $5 I know it's like probably the Miami Herald, you know, they'll give you two hours worth of work and, and work you to death and send you off. Mm -hmm. Well, no, this was a new newspaper and um, it was called Miami Today. Still around, obviously. Well, there's nothing obvious about that. But the Miami T is still around, and um, and they wanted somebody with a particular look, dress, and appearance to go into the the the, the buildings on Brickell Avenue, Coconut Grove, Coral Gables, um, 
and go into these high rise condos and um and I fit that bill. Okay. And so, you know, I they asked me to come for the interview, I walked in and uh you tell somebody like myself to come dressed nicely. I come in a a, a slacks, a, a shirt tie and blue blazer, you know. And um and when I walked in, the lady said, uh, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'm here for the delivery job. And she looked me up and down and she said, I don't think so. And I said, what are you telling me? i overqualified? She said, no, but do you have a resume? And I said, yes. And she said, can you bring it tomorrow when you come? Well, long story short, you know, within three weeks, I was upstairs selling advertising. Okay. And still delivering newspapers because it was a virgin publication getting going. I was there, okay. if memory serves me correctly, I was still eighth employee. And I stayed there for the next three and a half years. Wow. Wow. Very interesting story, Peter. So we're coming up to the final minute. Mm -hmm. um, we will, you know, ask you to look at telling us about your professional life. Mm -hmm. But in this segment, um, would you want to take a minute to recap and tell our viewers, um, you know, uh, anything that you'd like them to know or to learn about you and or any snippets or words of wisdom to our viewers? Ah, uh, boy, I don't know. I'm a little shy like that. <laughs> <laughs> With you, it flows naturally, though. Um, but, you know, I, one of the things that you know, Patrick, is that I'm a kid and yeah. I'm a kid at heart. Um, I like to joke around and make sure that everybody around me is comfortable and happy. Absolutely. And my I father that. reminded me of one simple thing. He said, Peter, there's no law on planet Earth that says that you have to grow. However, you must be responsible. Mm -hmm. And that is what stuck with me throughout my entire life. I refuse to grow up and I try to be as responsible as I can be. And I've shared that with um, my children and uh, my wife. Um, thank you once again for appearing with us. And hopefully we'll get into um, the, your professional life in another segment. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. There you have it, um, viewers, Peter Webley, um, Chief Executive, Office of Caribbean Today, based in Miami, Florida. Um, very fascinating story. Thank you.